On the heels of the revelation that Boeing is planning to lay off as many as 400 workers from its Space Launch System program, NASA has called the SLS Mega Rocket essential to its Artemis moon landing program. So in confusion about what exactly may change for both the launch vehicle and Artemis in the days and weeks ahead. And to add to the confusion, less than 24 hours ago, NASA released this promotional video on YouTube regarding Artemis 2 and the exciting things that are going to be happening on this mission, even though this mission absolutely requires SLS, at least in its current configuration. And if SLS were canceled, it definitely wouldn't be the same mission, nor would it probably involve the same astronauts. So what the hell is going on here? How can Boeing announce the potential potential layoff of hundreds of employees responsible for the construction of NASA's ridiculously expensive super rocket, and at the same time, NASA almost immediately expressing their almost unconditional support for the rocket just a couple of days later. It makes no sense, but I have a theory at least an idea as to how NASA could keep going with SLS, at least for now, while still saving the government money in the long run. So first of all, let's familiarize everyone with Artemis 2 and why canceling it at this point would just be a really stupid idea. This mission involves four veteran NASA astronauts, well actually three and one Canadian, Commander Reed Wiseman, Pilot Victor Glover, Mission Specialist Christina Koch, and Canadian Space Agency Mission Specialist Jeremy Hansen. That's a big deal right there. Canada's chance to send an astronaut all the way to the moon, the first non-American to ever do that. Very big deal, but as we've all noticed, I don't think Trump really cares what Canada wants, but all of that having been said, this mission is not about landing on the moon, but rather orbiting it and testing all of the systems on the Orion spacecraft in the process. It requires SLS to push the Orion all the way out to the moon, and the reason that SLS is the only rocket that currently exists anyway that's capable of doing that in a single launch is because of the combination of the extreme amount of thrust that this rocket has at its disposal between four RS-25 engines from the space shuttle era and two upgun solid rocket boosters, giving it more thrust than even the Saturn V has combined with the fact that the upper stage part of the rocket, the ICPS and the Orion, are very, very lightweight. Even though Starship has more than double the propulsive power that the SLS has, the upper stage part of Starship, that is to say the Starship part of the rocket, well, it weighs 1,300 metric tons without any payload on board, whereas the ICPS on the SLS rocket weighs 72 metric tons and the Orion only weighs 26 metric tons. So the entire upper stage assembly of SLS, the ICPS plus Orion, weighs just over 59 metric tons, or substantially less than the unfueled version of Starship, which weighs 100 metric tons minimum without any fuel on board at all. So this is why a rocket like SLS can throw this assembly to an altitude of about 1,500 kilometers or so before the ICPS. ICPS engine is even engaged, and then the ICPS drives the Orion all the way to a high Earth orbit, and then at that point, NASA begins to test the onboard systems on Orion extensively to make sure that it's properly functioning before they try to send it all the way out to the moon. The solar panels are extended, 
All the onboard systems, life support, etc. are also tested for about a 24-hour period before the Orion even separates from the ICPS structure. By the way, the ICPS will later on be replaced with a much more powerful exploration upper stage with four engines instead of just one. But I would say chances are we're not going to be seeing that unless plans change considerably. Considerably. So once the orbit has been accomplished and once all the onboard testing is done, at that point Orion separates from the ICPS, but it doesn't leave immediately. Instead, on this mission, Orion is going to turn around, maneuver into close proximity of the ICPS in order to test the onboard docking systems with Orion. It won't dock completely with the ICPS, but it will at least simulate a docking approach and the reason that's so important is in the future Orion is going to be docking with Starship and also with an orbiting space station called the Lunar Gateway in lunar orbit so they would like to see just how well this ship performs with these docking maneuvers during the Artemis 2 test getting as much done in this mission as possible before the onboard engines on Orion push it the rest Rest of the way to the moon. So by the time the ship reaches an altitude of about 74,000 kilometers, at which point it separates from ICPS and makes its way towards the moon, the life support system will have been thoroughly tested. And even the communication and navigation systems on Orion will have been thoroughly tested too before the journey to the moon even begins. After performing a TLI or translunar injection burn, Orion will arrive in lunar orbit in approximately four days and will travel about 7,000 kilometers beyond the far side of the moon, which is further away from Earth than any human crew has ever traveled in the past. They will also continue to evaluate the spacecraft systems, including demonstrating Earth departure and return operations, practicing emergency procedures, testing the radiation shelter, and other activities. And of course, prior to re-entry, Orion will separate from the service module, which by the way is built by the European Space Agency. Germany is actually responsible for 50% of this spacecraft. They are the ones who build the vast majority of the components on the service module, and then the rest of Orion will re-enter the atmosphere. This part of Orion, like the Crew Dragon spacecraft, is the only reusable component of the entire SLS system, which I have long considered to be completely unacceptable in this day and age of reusable rockets. All of that having been said, though, why is it a bad idea to cancel Artemis 2? Well, it's because all of these spacecraft exist and have been delivered to Cape Canaveral. Just about everything that is needed for Artemis 2 is already finished. The money has been spent, the construction is complete, and the rocket is in the process of being stacked right now in the vehicle assembly building. It could be argued that it's going to cost more money to disassemble the entire thing and then figure out where the hell to put it as opposed to just launching it and getting the mission done in the first place. And by the way, to a great degree, that's the case with Artemis 3 as well. The vast majority of that rocket is also complete, and really all you have to do for the most part is ground operations, the delivery of the core stage, that sort of thing, which granted the way Boeing does things is going to be ridiculously expensive, but they've already proven that this system works and it is the only operational mature rocket on the planet right now that's capable of transporting humans to cis lunar space. There's no other rocket that exists currently that can do the job, and until there is, I think 
Retiring this thing could be a very premature thing to do until we really know that more innovative solutions are going to be able to get the job done quickly. And NASA had this to say about the issue and about Boeing's announcements. Quote, NASA and its industry partners continuously work together to evaluate and align budget resources, contractor performance, and schedules to execute mission requirements efficiently, safely, and successfully in support of NASA's Moon to Mars goals and objectives. NASA defers to its industry contractors for more information regarding their workforces. It's difficult to interpret exactly what that statement means, and Boeing did not respond to a request for additional comment, but what I think it means is that Artemis 2 and chances are Artemis 3 are still on the books. The vast majority of the money, nearly all of the money necessary to get SLS operational for both of these missions has already been spent. The hardware has almost been completely built and ready to go. There is no point in retiring this and throwing these components away or tossing them in a museum when they're perfectly capable of taking astronauts to the moon while NASA starts seriously looking at other alternatives. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to take a considerable amount of time before NASA's ready to land astronauts on the moon with Lunar Starship anyway. It's very possible that Artemis 3 is not going to happen until late 2027 or perhaps 2028 given where we are with Lunar Starship development and Lunar Starship is of course the chosen and anointed human landing system that's going to be putting astronauts on the moon for the first time in over 50 years. Part of me wonders whether or not Elon Musk is advocating that the moon be abandoned, that the moon is just a distraction, let's concentrate on Mars because he doesn't want to have to fulfill the rest of his contract. He has a contractual obligation that he's received nearly $4 billion for to put astronauts on the lunar surface with a lunar Starship spacecraft that he's not terribly interested in. Going to the moon is not his priority, but he has spent billions of dollars developing Starship to go to Mars as well as the moon. It would be very much in his interest to see Artemis get canceled so he doesn't have to worry about spending additional time and resources getting astronauts to the moon when he really wants to get them to Mars. And that's something I think NASA and the current administration really needs to keep in mind before we look at abandoning Artemis altogether. And Donald Trump needs to remember one thing. If he does abandon Artemis, he will not be making any phone calls to astronauts successfully landing on the surface of Mars by the time he leaves office. That absolutely will not happen. But if he stays the course, he may very well find himself making that phone call before he leaves office in 2028 and take credit for it because after all, this was the plan that he put into motion during his first term in office. Orion, SLS, the HLS plan, all of it was put into motion while Trump was president. Why wouldn't he want to see his plan be fulfilled and to be responsible for such an historic moment? Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. All the details are in the description and until next time, stay angry about space.